drive it than yesterday, so see how things have to go and end up going. It is definitely Monday. I think it's the 26th or the 27th. And it's about 5.30 in the afternoon and uh, we're up for a ride. Side clear. And we are off. Go around the bus. behind the bus for now. This is the most amount of traffic I've driven in so far, well, on a regular basis, so. Then I guess 5.30, uh, this is, uh, if you call it lockdown, this is the essential traffic. <laughs> Just slowly waking up. I was up before. I didn't. I did some gaming. The gaming takes. Typically, the gaming takes about a half hour to 45 minutes. Uh, then I did an hour's worth of meditation. Uh, I had a meal. One of my favorite things again. Kind of like a little, it's a, well, I'll call it an Asian pizza. It's kind of like an east west fusion type of thing. We're stuck at another light. the bus. Too much traffic to go around, so we're all right, though. Then the light up ahead.
how you play a leap car with the bus. Just make sure the bus is going to try to catch up. It's going to catch up with us. We don't go that fast, so. There's going to be a bus behind us. Go down front again. Because it was bad, but I don't think it's, just, it's not as windy as Clipper is. So I think I'm going to go down uh, Brian again. So let's try this. Let's do it at 40. And I do a lot, the pickup is very good. You notice the pickup is very nice. It's very good on here, so I can't keep in, uh, I'm in uh, line with the traffic. Bit of a pull. Much 
on that turn. Again, uh, heading back home, I think this will add uh, a good amount uh, of material to the vlog. Uh, interesting night, watching SpongeBob SquarePants after meditation, two hours. We're in the final week of, uh, of Pascha, heading towards uh, Pascha itself. Uh, tonight's episode of uh, SpongeBob was quite, uh, I would say, topical in that uh, Patrick comes up with a disease called snail disease, and the whole town promptly panics, and everyone's got snail disease. <laughs> talking about how paranoia evolves in a form, in terms of medical form, called hypochondria, where a person who's reading up on these medical sites starts to believe they have a particular disease uh, because they have what are called symptoms of the disease. And this is the problem with self-diagnosis is that uh, it's not always correct. Matter of fact, it's very rarely correct. Stalled accelerator.
accelerator didn't engage properly, so I had to wait. So we're off once again. Back to my place. Second home. See, I'm getting some ride logs in like everybody else does. It just the difference is that they're in a car and I'm on a scooter. Anyways, uh, hypochondria is something that's been around for a long time. The entire uh, alternative medicine crowd, including where the, the origins of the anti maskers are all from within this uh, form of hypochondria where uh, they're always dying. <laughs> Where they're always diagnosing themselves with these diseases. Some are real, some are imaginary. But one thing it does do is it, it, it creates a market for those who want to sell medications or various different medical devices or, or the alternative medical devices. Uh, for those who uh, are prone to hypochondria, and you would think that hypochondria would be so, well, something that's rare, but hypochondria is not rare, unfortunately. It's uh, something that's rather quite common. So a number of people can be tricked, uh, you know, a good number of people can be tricked into believing that something exists even though there is not, the, the, the reality is far from the truth. Well, well the truth is far from, from what people uh, think it is. In other words, uh, what they believe to be true is not actually true, but rather it's a fiction. And it's based on fear. Fear is the selling factor. Once you have, I mean, this is this is the, the entire war on terrorism was based on nothing but fear. So we've been in this sort of state of fear for a long time. It's not something new. It's not something that uh, just all of a sudden popped up and here we are. This is something that's been around for a while. And I was going to think, I don't think we'll ever get sort of get out of it. It's just sort of this, you know, as the UN says, it's going to become our new normal. And the consequences of this new normal will going to sort of roll up. And your fear levels will determine how you live. Because of all, unfortunately, the fear levels, the stress that comes with fear, is hazardous to your health as well. What do you think heart attacks are about? Heart attacks are stress induced. This is what hypertension is. We've well, had hypertension with us for a long time. Hypertension isn't anything new. It's something that's been around for a long time and there's no they know it kills. So, unfortunately, 
death is a reality, it's a part of our existence, and it happens. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of cruelty and violence in the world, and people who believe that death should be given to those that they believe are undeserving of life. And I use that phrase because it's more than just people who they consider to be murderers or dangerous people who have killed other people. There are categories of people who are deemed to be unworthy of life. They're defective or whatever you, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they assume that this form of life, this type of person, is unworthy of life and therefore should die. And it goes in cycles. Sometimes it's there, you know, It's part of our life. It, it, well, it's part of it's, it, it. It's been there for a long time. This is what the Nazis were. The Nazis were people who believed. <laughs> that certain people should be allowed to live. That they were defective. And that we should euthanize them. Put them to. Give them a happy death. And this, this is how you ended up with uh, six million Jews dying in Auschwitz. Or in other related death camps as well. But we learned nothing from that. Nothing was really learned. Because we're back in the same situation again where we're euthanizing people, classifying different people as unworthy of life. Now the people say, well, who? I'm not uh, sort of killing people. Because, well, of course they're not killing people. Why? Because they've already declassified the people that they're killing as not being human or not worthy of life. So, they've already justified the murder. And so they don't have a problem with it. Because it's part of uh, the called current understanding or the current sense of morality. And so they have no problem because, well, they didn't kill anybody. They're simply supporting people, they're supporting that, oh, this thing over here a biomass is not really alive, it doesn't have the proper classification as being human, so therefore it's okay. You didn't kill anyone or anyone. This is how you justify that. This is, this is how you, you end up in the situation that we're in now. And I know one lady, this we're talking about, this is how it sort of popped up. One of the ladies in our church, she was fine. Her her, her children, uh, one of them was a teacher and stuff like that. Uh, they were all convinced to go get the COVID shot. They did. Uh, one of the ladies got sick. She's in a coma now, induced by the doctors, and now she's, they're going to pronounce her dead anytime soon. 